Welcome everybody to the Hearthstone Pro-Am, brought to you by NVIDIA GeForce. We're halfway through the day. Uh, we just saw Life Coach defeat Trump 3-0 uh, very convincingly, but it just tapped the lineup pretty well overall. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that uh, he just uh, did Life Coach things as normal and was able to run over Trump this week, but maybe next week if they meet or some other time in the future, Trump might get an opportunity to maybe even uh, put Life Coach on the opposite end of things. Coming up, we have Strifeco versus Tight. Strive Cloud9, uh, one of the most established players in Hearthstone for a long time. Lots of respect. Nothing but uh, the utmost honor for something like him. Versus Tice, a guy who had to carve out his name over a process of being an open qualified player for many months and has now established himself, in my opinion, as one of the top... I would say Tice is easily one of the top 10 players in the world, just in terms of his consistency and uh, his ability to play the game at such a high level. Really appreciate uh, how he's a, a great, great story of a guy who's worked his way up the ladder. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Tice is a fantastic player and a, and a fantastic person as well. I got to meet him about a month and a half ago, and he was such a nice nice guy. He sat in the audience first chatting to us about the games we were watching and such. And like you said, he's, he was a work, workhorse. He, he proper grinded through the uh, the qualifiers. The I half you, uh, I half you, um, King of the Hill. Oh man, I don't think anyone else dominated that as much as him. I think Alchemix, I think it was Alchemix who got close, but Taj was just on a rampage during that. Yeah, it was a, it was a few weeks for Alchemix. Uh, Savitz also had a pretty good run too. Tice was the one who got nine weeks or something absurd. It was just like, it was so long that, like, at, I won't, it was just like a little boring because it's like Tice just kept beating everybody. It was like, well, this this is kind of this is not really fun to watch because Tice just keeps destroying everybody who got in his path. Uh, even Strifeco, I remember Strifeco was up three zero in that best of seven, and then Tice reverse swept um, to win that series. Really, really stuff overall. Uh, now let's take a look at the lineups here. Strifeco has Druid, Hunter, and Warlock. Tice has that Rogue, Mage, and Hunter. Hunter is. You know, in a weird spot right now. Uh, where do you see Hunter in the metagame? Uh, people are so aware of it right now. Uh, I think it's a good ladder. It's definitely a great ladder deck because it's fast. Tournament play, though, it can fall short to lineups. I mean, it only gets... Uh, one thing Hunter was really good at before Conquest was just snowballing free wins. It doesn't have that opportunity anymore because once you've won one game of it, it's out of the question. But... Uh, people are starting to figure it out and people are starting to tech against it and I think that's maybe what the problem is. I think Hunter maybe needs to die down for a little bit and then it can come back up like it always does. That's right. You know, it's it's fascinating because in a specific best of X against a player that you know that you can prepare for your opponent, you can capitalize on normal play styles. For example, if you know... Hyped from Tempo Storm, really loves bringing a rogue. You can bring three decks that kill rogue and like guaranteed kill him. And it doesn't matter if you're down zero two, he has to eventually play and win with that deck. You can absolutely target it and uh, and win. And and Hunter became one of those things too, where people are like, I'm gonna kill Hunter, so I'm gonna put Antique Heal by my rogue deck. Uh, I'm gonna put Flare in my Hunter deck. Like that kind of stuff is really funny to see if uh, people can really out tech their opponents here. Not sure how successful it's been because I know Kazan Mystic has always been in and out of decks. Uh, it would be surprising if Strifeco bring Kazan. It doesn't feel like his type of um, choice to make unless it was like super, super dominant. I would expect just normal, straight, good decks. Uh, I think it's like a st standard mid-range Druid. Uh, probably a Zoo deck, which Strifeco really loves to play too, and a uh, Face Hunter. For I'm just going to think it's Mech Mage. Oh, no, 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 maybe Freeze Mage. I know Tyce loves Freeze Mage, even though Nylum really likes running that Pilot of the Sky Gold Mech Mage. Yeah, I mean, Tice played Mech Mage for a very long time. Even when, even before it became the powerhouse that it was, I'm pretty sure he played it for quite a bit when uh, Undertaker was still dominant. But yeah, Freeze Mage is just so powerful right now. It's very tempting to just take that over every Mage deck because of how much Forasan has affected it, how much uh, it isn't affected by the old format, Conquest, and you, you can get one win with it, as long as you don't run into a, a really hard counter like Control Warrior. And Control Warrior is uh, not really that dominant in the meta right now, so free, it's a good time for Freeze Mage to shine. 
Well, uh, we're going to start off with Freeze Majors Hunter, and this should be a good opportunity for Tice to get a 1-0 lead. Freeze Mage has is one of the few classes that can deal with Hunter very effectively. You never really have to trigger Explosive Trap. You can freeze the state of the board. Uh, you have Ice Barrier to gain a lot of health, and you even have... Um, you even have some uh, ways to draw a lot of cards without giving up too much. You know, you could have the Mad Scientist weed out the secret and still do something on board. Uh, not to mention the hero power, naturally, it just, like, deals with minions as opposed to, like, Rogue or Druid, which have to double dip. And the thing Freeze Mage has been doing recently is including two loot hoarders. And the great thing about Loot Hoarder at the moment, because there's quite a lot of aggressive early game decks going around, these Loot Hoarders on turn two onwards can start contesting the board. So it gives you a little bit more stability against these early early uh, base decks. And it gives you that card drawer as well. So I think Loot Hoarder is a very good uh, meta choice almost uh, for right now because of all the Zoo and the Face Hunter and stuff. So... Um, he hasn't got one right now. Scientist is still a very good car, like you said. It can fetch eight health, or it can f uh, fetch that uh, ice block, which is really crucial to the game plan sometimes. But we do see an ice block in hand, so a bit clunky. You always want your mad scientist to fetch that, but uh, we'll see what secret he gets. I, I, I think he'd probably want an ice barrier because he has the ice block in hand. He doesn't want to double up here. Yeah, I, I like this decision. Uh, to just push damage as soon as possible. Um, you know, contest the mad scientist. But still, it's looking okay. The fact that Tice even hit on the scientist and gets hard was a really big deal. If he was picking up only burn, he'd be in a big, awkward spot. And that was what Strifecore was really hoping to find. He was hoping to find an opportunity to maximize his damage per card. And um, if Tice only had hero powers, there was three minions he needed to ping down that turn. So he would have been able to add more damage. Infiltrator sticking is still a big deal. Um, Tice also doesn't have ice barrier. He only has ice block, so it's still a little uncomfortable at the moment. I think the good thing for Tice, uh, kind of good and he didn't get all the card draw from the Acolyte, which kind of sucks, but he did stop free damage, and Face Hunter wants to get as much damage as it wants, as we know, so being able to, that Acolyte pain was a good play from there, and playing this Raw Doomsayer here, unless he's got an Owl, or, I mean, I mean, a Doomsayer is a bit awkward, I think, against Face Hunter sometimes, because they don't really have to commit anything to the board, they can just hero power, play another weapon, wait for the Doomsayer to pop off, and then just redevelop the board after it, so, looking at it now, uh, I think Strifeco is in a really comfortable position. Yeah, there's still no Ice Barrier, no draw for Tice, this is actually a really bad spot. Um, man, if he had that opportunity to have Ice Barrier weeded through, he could have played Ice Block. Uh, and then, and, you know, just freeze your opponent, stall him to the face. This, I mean, there is a legitimate case of using Frostbolt here just to stall him for damage. He has four damage he needs to put out with that weapon. Uh, you want to play Emperor Thorasan. You want to start doing other things, too. You just you need to buy time. This Frostbolt not only says deal three damage and freeze, it also gain two health. Yeah, he stops that weapon chipping away. Uh, you'd be down to 10, guaranteed, just from the weapon alone. With the hero power, that's another 4. We see an Arcane Golem, so... Um, Strifeco has a lot of damage if he wants to commit to it right now, which is really uncomfortable for Tyus because he's not drawing enough cards right now. And that Eagle Horn bow shutting down the Acolyte of, uh, Acolyte of Pain uh, may be the thing that has uh, helped Strifeco gain such an advantage because he didn't give Taiji the opportunity to draw so much. Ooh, Ice Lance is not it. And Blizzard also just takes the power off the board in by half, not even fully removes it. He is in a very awkward spot. Of course, the opposite end is could be just using Emperor Thorson, um, trying to cheapen everything, get an opportunity to play Ice Block for cheaper next turn, assuming his opponent blocks it. And then uh, maybe even you utilize like or stall for long enough until you can draw Alex Straza. But the fact is, he doesn't have enough time at the moment. And the block is probably going to be popped this turn, and he'll be so low that playing a back-to-back -back ice blocks probably won't be enough. You'll need to draw something else. 
to help him maybe an ice barrier or a heel bot if he, if he runs it some people do but the cookie cutter build for freeze mage these days is usually doesn't include that i think taiji is almost out of this game I, I can't really see him coming back right i mean shifeco just has to hero power and hit weapon to pop it from this point on he can make it complicated in fact you know what he can do Oh, okay. I was like, you know what he can do is he could play a trap, make him believe that uh, it's explosive trap or something like that. But what's really funny is that and then being snake trap, the juggle out, and it ends up killing because secrets don't activate on your on your turn. I thought that was a really cute play, but highly unnecessary. This is definitely the safer and more more appropriate play. I think it, as well, Strife Crow is in in a situation where he's going to win in two turns and he doesn't really need to do something like that. He can literally just keep pressing hero power now until he wins. Just deal with the board, press hero power, wait till Ty's does something, which won't be a lot, and then just hero power again to finish him off. Yeah, I think this freeze mage is dead. Um, even if even if he draws Alex Straza, which is his last chance, because, uh, yeah, it's his last chance. Um, Shrive Crow would have no, like, he would not give his opponent an extra mana through the arcane goal. And that's just like, it's just nonsensical at that point. Exactly. He just presses zero power and just waits. I mean, that's all he has to do now. I mean, all Tyus can really do at this point is try and kill him before he gets killed. But as we can see, his hand doesn't really commit. Uh, it's not good for that kind of commitment. He's got a lot of AoE, which doesn't do anything at this point, And he's. Has, he's not going to have the opportunity to draw enough bursts, I don't think. His only opportunity is to... Um... No, actually, there's no... Op Unless he has Heelbot in his deck. Heelbot and Frost Nova. And this yeah. is going to be the final card? Oh, that's not enough. No. Uh, he just pings himself, realizes he's out of time. Out of luck. Shrifeco takes the first game, and Hunter successfully dissects the Freeze Mage. Not always the common case i feel like freeze mage wins more often than not as long as they keep you know ice barrier in the hand for example um then they're usually have enough stall but i think a big deciding moment was um tice not being able to follow up his early game mad scientist play very effectively and strife crow appropriately taking out uh, acolyte of pain because if he was able to draw a little bit more uh maybe he draws into the right answers and um you know tice not getting the ice barrier off the secret and holding the other the copy of Ice Block is definitely not helpful at all. Yeah, he's a bit of a clunky hand. He had a lot of AoE that really didn't do a lot. Um, he may probably need one or two of that to be able to deal with the board. And being able to deal with that Acolyte of Pain so easily, only letting him draw one card, was probably one of the big deciding factors because he never get, he never drew another opportunity to draw more cards. He never saw those Ar Arcane Intellects or another Acolyte of Pain, for example. So it was looking very much in Strife Crow's favor from then on because everything else was so clunky. All right, well, looks like we're going to get ready for uh, our next game here. I'm trying to figure out what's best for, for Tice. See, I guess he could stick on Freeze Mage, considering that um, you know he it's, it's still pretty good against the field last time I checked. The only thing is that the Druid. The Druid is still like out and about, and if uh, the Druid ends up picking up a re win against Freeze Mage, then he has to 3-0 you know, the, the mage from Strife Crow, so that, that's not feeling pretty good. Or, or, or sorry, uh, Strife Crow's not a mage, right? <laughs> Strife Crow's playing uh, the Warlock deck, so he has a 3 of the Warlock deck, which he could do, hypothetically speaking, but it's just really difficult to do so. Yeah, Taj might just stick with the mage, just because he has to win with it eventually anyway, so if he could sneak a win this next game, it makes the, the rest of the series a little bit easier for him. But like he, uh, he's got Druid, which does very well against Freeze Mage. Um, Warlock, depending on what Warlock it is, uh, as we, we well we saw today, we saw Ping Ping uh, win the Handlock Freeze Match. But that was down to a very interesting tech card, which I doubt Strife Crow is running. That seemed very kind of unique to his own deck building. So I don't know. I think maybe queuing up the Face Hunter, try and get a, a, a cheap win on the board, just so he's got a. Uh, Got a score, but other than that, I'm not sure. It's, it's a tough, it's a tough call for ties. Uh, yeah, 
I, I'm kind of on the train of like right now. It sort of doesn't matter what he picks um, because everything is still dichotomized, and it depends on how Strife Crow picks his decks. Uh, it, it could be like you know, for example, if it's Handlock, then he'd want to pick Hunter, right? Or if it was Zoo, then he'd want to pick Rogue. And if Strife Crow chooses to go Drew, he'd want to play you know, mech mage or, you know, if it's freeze, you know, say it is something else too. Like this kind of stuff, it, it's so variable at this stage that conquest is purely pay, should be picked off of comfort, uh, I feel. And uh, just really hope that you don't get the one awful matchup that you most likely will have, like handlock versus rogue, for example. Yeah, I think that's true. I It seems he goes for his rogue though. Maybe he feel if maybe he feels he doesn't want to commit another game to the mech mage after that start. Try another deck, see how that uh, goes for him. I mean, sometimes you can pick another deck, your same uh, the same deck again, and think right, I'm just gonna get a win with this. And you could be hit by the same bad draws, or things might not go your way again, and it could demoralize you a bit too much with that deck. So maybe he feels like if he plays this rogue, uh, he'll feel a lot more comfortable. All right, well, Rogue is a class that I, I know Tice's teammates, RDU, for example, have played so much Rogue, and they're one of the best Rogue players out there in their entire region. Tice, in the meantime, uh, he's not particularly known too much for his Rogue play compared to you know Druid or Mage uh, or even Warlock, but he's still rather proficient. Against Druid, the most important thing are minions. Because you can have all the spells in the world, but minions really help you leverage your position very effectively. So if you have sap, sap becomes so much better when Violet Teacher is stuck onto the board. Or if uh, you know if you have a pilot shredder already, then you can start utilizing like removal really easily with something stick. That's where Druid gets uh, in trouble against Rogue if it can't keep up with its minion pressure and presence. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And we see Taish hands that Violet Teacher there, and he has a prep. He picks up Loaf again. What would be nice to see from Taish draw? Maybe a Sap, like you said. Because like Violet Teacher on turn four with prep Sap on, say, his Shredder is such a massive tempo swing. Because you gain like two one ones a 3-5. Really hard for the Druid to respond to the next turn because the swipe doesn't even clear up the Violet Teacher, for example. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you need a little bit more. Spell power swipes, swipe hero power, swipe wrath. Uh, no one's really running any kind of five damage spot uh, spot removal for Druid, uh, even though they do have access to some. Have to imagine that he's just going to follow the curve here. There's a turn three coin Violet Teacher into Violet Teacher. Nothing really to prep to follow up. Uh, then he has... He has actually used a really amazing curve here. He can put double four drops back to back into a five drop. Then he can prep, uh, prep sprint into something and still have two mana remaining, which is absolutely disgusting considering that he can keep up the the card flow. Now, Emperor Thorsten introduced a weird dynamic because you clearly need to kill him, but you don't have an easy access without giving up a lot here at yourself. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I stand corrected. Yeah, Violet, that was a good uh, pickup. He gets the Deadly Poison with the SI. And it's four mana as well, so it fits the curve really nicely. I mean, innovating uh, Farasan on this turn for Druid is just disgusting. It's <laughs> reducing... Uh, a, a Druid like this will have a lot of high-value minions like the Druid of the Claws, like the, the Snarius, for example. And uh, being able to reduce their cost and make the Druid faster overall is such a... Uh, it's, Sudden, it's just disgusting. I, I, I think Forasan is a little bit too powerful for decks like these, like this and Freeze Mage. We, we, some of my friends have discussed it might need the Nat Pagel treatment to kind of bring it back to a level playing field. But the only problem with that is we saw what that did to Nat Pagel, and it kind of just killed the card, which I wouldn't want to see. I think they just need to do something with him. I, I think Thorsen is uh, fine for now. There's, um, I mean. If you play uh, Sylvanas here, you can just get sapped, and Sylvanas costs the equal amount. You play her again, but you're starting to take a lot of damage. The teacher is starting to put tokens out. You're not exactly in the best of positions either. And um, you know, on the other side, if you don't develop Sylvanas, then your opponent drops Lothab. You can't really leverage any removal that you get on the other end. It's not the easiest spot here for Strife Girl, even though he did get that Thorson. 
Yeah, he just goes for... He clears up everything but the token, but the thing with Rogue is all Rogue needs is one minion to start doing some bursts. I don't see Taiz doing any bursts right now, but that's kind of the general plan you want against Rogue all the time. Just keep that board clear. Don't give him any targets for that Sharp Sword Oil. And Taiz has got some good options here. He can clear up this 4-1 uh, pretty easily with the token. Which made Strife Crow's play previously like not that great, but he felt he, the need to do it. Hmm. Well, now the Drake's out there, and you have swipe, but the thing is, um, it's not it's not the best minion you can put forward uh, with the Shea of Naxxram. Sylvanas is still much better overall, but you have to deal with the spell power. Yeah, he's quite fortunate the Forest have made that shade uh, two cost because I think if it was just a swipe with a three cost shade, it would just have been an awful turn. It was just trading a spell for a minion and then Tyge would just drop another minion and then he's back at the square. He's back in the same spot he was last turn. So at least having the shade for two is a lot better than not having like the Forest on previously. So Forest did actually pay off quite a bit, I think. Do you like killing off this shade here, or do you like developing Lothab? <clears throat> I think Lothab's fine. Does it I think matter? You... Uh, not right now. I mean, if you wanted to kill this shade, you already have you have another turn to do it anyway, because it's going to stay free free on your turn. So the blade flurry's uh, an option next turn if he really feels it's necessary to get rid of him. Oh, yeah, I feel very similar because if you play the violet teacher next turn, you can also squeeze in a deadly poison and eviscerate. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, and a blade flurry, and that allows you to take care of what normally should be an ancient of lore turn. So this was a very good setup from Tice. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like he's going to have to just trade into Sylvanas, and you know go to another regular plan. But at the same time, Tice is in a very dominant spot here. Shrive is going to be hurting on cards. Tice still has prep uh, sprint. And will refill very easily and capitalize on the fact that Druid can't really keep up with the Rogue's tempo here. Yeah, he's going to have to probably use this shit. Oh, he actually decides to get rid of it with the Blade Flurry. I think that's fine. Uh, he's got another Blade Flurry sitting there. He used the prep, so he developed two one ones, and he gets the fast here as well. So, like you said, Druid just can't keep up the tempo right now. There's just so many minions coming down for this Rogue. Well, interestingly enough, there is a second swipe here to eliminate the Violet Teacher, and that's a high priority. I suppose the question becomes if you want to drop Big Game Hunter. And a lot of road decks are starting to put Dr. Boom more regularly. Before it was, uh, an, it, you know, maybe a very sharp contrast in styles and what you could do there, but... It's really interesting because now I think uh, people are really starting to do that commonly. So I don't think... Uh, I don't think it'd be wrong to keep it, but I still think that you'd want to consider dropping it for sure. Yeah, if people are starting to cycle out the uh, uh, the safe seat deckhand, I find now in lists, I'm putting that Doctor Boom instead. So maybe they just want a better late game. They're not just going for that kind of super fast oil rogue builds like they did at the start when the, the deck was created. It slowed down just a little bit. And it keeps up with decks like Druid uh, when you slow it down, put in Dr. Boom. Because they do have to keep hold of these big game hunters because it's the only way they can hard removal it. And if you look at what he's already used, he's already used two swipes and a, and a Wrath, if I remember rightly. So a lot of his removal is already gone. Hmm. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure that almost whatever the Rogue does at this point and that involves playing Van Cleef, is just going to run him over. Uh, especially considering that there's no actual way for um, Drew to keep up with uh, a big minion like this right now, unless he picks up... Uh, oh, actually, hold on. He played Van Cleef as in 8-8. I thought he was going to play a 6-6. So this actually does get answered by G Big Game Hunter, and Strife Crow's rewarded <laughs> for being able to have that foresight to maybe like show off that he doesn't have a minion to be played. Yeah, that was such a clean board clear for Taij as well. I mean, Scenarius is one of those cards which is supposed to help you regain board, but it just did nothing in that situation. That's how far ahead the Rogue felt at this point. But now he's got a, he's got a 4-4 four, four and a 4-2. I mean, the SI will clear... Ah, oh, they eviscerate. <laughs> that pretty much answers it. 
And he's got a perfect mana curve for it. I mean, you could Drake, SI, Eviscerate, and clear the board. And once again, Strife Coro would be on the back foot. Hmm. He plays double fan. All right, so Tice just going to seize back control. At this stage, Druid's not even threatening to kill through damage of the Force of Nature Savage Roar. So if he draws that, he realistically might be thinking about clearing as well. On the flip side, Rogue, if if Tice is sprint number two and there's a lot of resources sank into trying to leverage the board and unsuccessfully doing so, then maybe Tice just runs out of damage. But I find that I still find that highly unlikely at this stage right now. This is so frustrating for Strife Crow. Uh, I mean, if I was in a situation now, you've seen the rogue go toe to toe. He's just removing everything you play, and you haven't seen a sap yet. And you finally get that sludge belcher, the one card that might protect you just from a bit of this uh, this board damage, and it's just going to get sapped. And it's just so tragic for Strife Crow. I think Tice is calculating he has lethal. I believe he's a few points off with the deadly poison and um, the oil. Doesn't unfortunately have that second blade flurry. I mean, he could commit to all the damage right now um, because he's, like you said, he's not really afraid of force of nature and he does have a sprint available to him, which he could use next turn. And if he gets a, a, a blade flurry off that, he'll surely just close out the game. So yeah, he does decide to go for it. Just go for the burst, which is, I think oh, is no. the right line of play. What's the, what's the druid really going to do at this point? Uh, yeah, short of Tree of Life, right? Like, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> you could restore nope. 27 health. That'd be pretty awesome. Um, double Taunt does do something. Imagine if this was uh, an opportunity to be defense with the um, Vitality Totem or something. But, you know, Double Taunt is still some way to get past. Or maybe he chooses to be aggressive with... Drew Claw because his opponent has Blade Flurry doesn't matter either way and he might need to charge this Drew the Claw. I'd be yeah, okay with that too. Yeah, I think so as well. He's sitting on that uh, Savage Roar as well. He's got to try and beat Tice at some point. There's only so many turns you can just keep dropping taunts. So he does need kind of an end game for this. So I think well, Tice will just go for the sprint. I mean, Tice is pretty much decked out at the sprint. And he, he just has to Blade Flurry uh, for the win here. And there, there it is. is. And he's got an Eviscerate too. So he's got plenty of overkill. That's going to wrap up game two. Tice is going to jump out uh, with a tie onto the series. And uh, Shrife Crow will have to win with Druid some other place. But remember that there is a Freeze Mage. So he still has like a favorable position uh, somewhere yeah. down the line in the series. Let's find a lineup to go. Uh, Strife Crow is still okay. I mean, the one the one one isn't too bad for him. He can still recover quite easily with his lineup. So it's going to very much depend on what they kind of read each other's going to pick. If he can get that fast druid into Freeze Mage, it'd be excellent for him. Cause most, not most certainly, but um, it's going to be good for him to get a win on the board with that because of the matchup. So there's uh, Strife Crow's Druid and Hunter, or sorry, Druid and uh, a Warlock remaining. Still no signs of what Warlock that is from Strife Crow, right? Um, I'm guessing it's, I'm still still guessing that it's Zoo. We haven't seen that today yet, even though we've seen a couple of Warlocks. Uh, uh, Strife Crow also re really likes playing Handlock too. I mean, personally, I think all kinds of Warlocks are fun to play at the moment and I, and I think it's resumed to being one of the better classes here it's just interesting to see that at one point warlock was always considered to be a class that people would see because of its hero power and how, what it allows you to do and then it fell off for a long time for several months in fact and now it's back and rightfully so it's crazy how imp gang bosses made zoo viable again it took one card for zoo to come back and another thing with Strife Crow as well, I do recall he has been playing uh, Demon Lock quite a bit as well. I remember seeing a list where he's running Dread Infernal in in uh, in his Demon Lock, so it could potentially be that as well. He seems very versatile with the class itself, and uh, classes like Warlock and Mage are uh, excellent for kind of keeping your opponent on their toes because they're never going to know what it is until the game starts, so it's very hard to get a read 
on their lineup. You kind of have to kind of go based on what they've been playing recently, kind of having a bit of research done to kind of get a, a better answer to what they're playing. I'm liking um, just going with the Hunter from this position from Tice, uh, just because I really just don't want to avoid. I want to avoid the the freeze mage versus druid as much as possible. So maybe it, you can you know let your opponent have that opportunity to play druid, and if he wins and doesn't win, it's almost the same exact thing either way. I, I think Hunter's uh, more than appropriate pick here for Tice. At yeah, this stage, though, 1-1, one, one, it's still somewhat inconsequential. What do you think Strife Crow should pick? Do you think he should just queue back into his Druid, hope he hits the Freeze Mage? Uh, yeah, it feels like Warlock can easily be abused too much by Freeze Mage, and even Hunter to a certain extent. I think Druid definitely seems to be his better pick here. I'm, I'm still picking Tyson Roll in this series. That Rogue versus Druid win was pretty key. Yeah, I agree. I think I think the Hunter is the best pick here. But he actually picks his Freeze Mage, so Strifeco reads correctly. He, he finds the Freeze Mage matchup, and this might be the game that helps decide the series, depending on how this goes. Huh. Well, he has Wild Growth. That's really impactful. I think the other cards he's searching for are like Emperor Thorson and, and a good curve. Meanwhile, Tice, he knows what to do. He has to get his early draw. He has to make sure to get the right cards, like Mad Scientists. Yeah, well, I guess you... Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, I'd be tempted to keep the Arcane Intellect, just to fish for stuff uh, a bit faster. Druids can be quite slow, like you said, with the Wilder Grove. Shade of Nax is really good for him because he gets that early curve. Um I guess Strife could just resurrect the Druid of Claw. I would, yeah, definitely keep the Arcane Intellect just for that early draw. Oh, wow. That's a very interesting hand. For Tice? Yeah, he gets a, he, he has the opportunity for turn two Arcane Intellect and turn three Arcane Intellect. So, or he can just develop a, a Loot Hoarder and then Arcane Intellect. Arcane yeah. So he's got a lot of card draw options here, which is what he wants, really. I think Loot Hoarder is better just because you keep the coin. Coin's pretty useful in this matchup if you need to hit Alex Strauss earlier um, or convert it into more damage. The opponent only has four mana, so he can hero power it down. And if not, Loot Hoarder sneaks him two damage, and it's always going to draw you that card later on. Oh, now, Acolyte something. is interesting because I always hear two sides of the argument. Like, first is that Acolyte should be dropped soon because you could silence it with the Keeper of the Grove, or you can tempt him to silence with the Keeper of the Grove, and the reality is more card draw. The other side of it is that Arcane Intellect directly opens up more options because you guarantee two draws, and it's immediate as opposed to Acolyte has to like bump into something and you have to wait another turn, and you can weigh your options better. I mean, Taish played the Acolyte over Arcane Intellect this turn. Is He just wants to slow... Strife Crow down. Revealing that shade as well is always good. And he's got, he actually picks up a blizzard. It's, it won't finish off the shade. But not only that, he's got a frostbolt as well. So I guess it gives him the option when he wants to, to frostbolt the shade down because he's revealed it. And that's, that's what he's going to go for. So, And the Doomsday is nice here as well because it'll force Strife Crow to either commit more damage or commit, well, just commit more damage to take it out or a silence. And silence is the worst case scenario. Yeah, um, he also just drew the claw charge, perfectly fine, justified. I was wondering if he had any room to innervate plays this turn, but it didn't seem so. Everything's pretty clunky. So let's see what Emperor Thorson can do for Tice. Uh, just cheapen some draw cards and freeze. Nothing too wild and extraordinary yet. But Shrife Crow still has to deal with this. Yeah, this most certainly is going to be dealt with in some way or another. So what he has reduced so far, I think it's pretty good. He's got some health, he's got some removal, he's got some draw. So he's got kind of a mix of everything. So he's got, it gives him a lot more options of what he wants to decide to do next turn because he has pretty much all the op all, all the paths that go down for his plays. Uh, clean swipe comes out. Probably see a hero power on this just to uh, tidy this up without committing too much of his minions. So uh, Strife Crow gains the board back, and Tice is probably 
So Tys has to decide what he values most here. Does he value his health or does he value his draw? Hmm, that's a good question. I think uh, you should still value, um, generally speaking, pulling into your win condition uh, as the freeze mage. Like, you can negate the damage effectively if you double arcane intellect and ice barrier. Uh, set up for a better blizzard because this is a very blizzard board. Um, not to mention that it's six mana that you can do a three damage AoE with down nose. So I think double arcane intellect into the ice barrier. Very good uh, turn for Tice. Still needs to find a way to set up Ice Block, though, um, before he draws into Alex Straza. We might see that in the following turn, but I think Shinolo is going to help out here. He might be able to get... Well, if he gets two Savage draws, that would be incredible because he has the Innovate sitting there ready. Uh, but, I mean, he's got the option of a Blizzard Doomsayer here if he really wants to hard clear everything. And he's got back-to-back -to -back blizzards as well, and the Sludge Belcher's already taken some damage, so I think Tai's just looking pretty comfortable right now. I mean, maybe. The fact that his opponent used Ancient of Lore is a pretty big deal. That's one less heal potential um, off of Druid if you use Alex Straza on an Ice Block. So he's working with less ways to rebound uh, and more damage within range. I think... Doomsayer is still a little too optimistic considering your opponent just Ancient of Lord and he's holding specific set of cards for a while. I think uh, Blizzard is okay here with Thalnos. And I think you'd want to use the six mana Blizzard. A little bit more expensive. Although, if you use regular Blizzard... I think six mana Blizzard's fine. Um, yeah. it, it holds the board there for the turn I mean, it does its job and then next turn he can maybe draw into some fit he can maybe decide if he wants to commit say a doomsayer and then a blizzard next turn but a back to yeah, back blizzard thinking, turn um, should be fine I was just thinking that if you use a 5 mana blizzard you can ping the you can ping the Ancient of Lore and then set it up so that I guarantee that you can keep Thanos for damage combo because if you look Normally with Thanos, you do 21 damage if you do the full Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance. Because everything, but because the, you have two more mana due to Thorson, you can even weave in um, another Frostbolt in there. So that becomes 25. That's eh, a lot of damage to consider. Yeah, uh, either way, it doesn't really seem to matter that much. Just food for thought. Uh, so he goes for the draw here before he... Uh... Oh, we see a zombie chair pickup, actually. That's a bit clunky. I guess he just wants to savage for as fast as possible. He just wants to be able to... Because we don't see any secrets down from Tyus yet, so he's not protected by the ice block. I wonder what Strife Crow's weighing up here. Certainly Has to be a flame strike concern. But even if his opponent has flame strike, it's almost like your bound duty to start pressuring the board enough, so that way you might draw into lethal. Uh, lethal. Even if he has flame strike, he doesn't have uh, ice block up, so uh, it's okay. And Strife Crow also needs to prioritize armoring up with his uh, Druid hero power. That's really important, so that way, um, even after Alex Straza, you ha still have some life left over. So 17, 18 health. So Tyus actually has a lot of damage in his hand now, picking up that second ice lance. I mean, he he has both secrets as well, so he can set up, he can set up his ice block, he can set up eight health as well. But he's probably trying to think. He's got to consider trying and killing him now. I mean, do, do you you don't really wait for Alex now. As, as long as you keep drawing burn, you're you're going to be in a situation where you can just burst him down without Alex, especially with that blood mage Falnos. Yeah, it's like I said, uh, he can do twenty five damage if he picks up the second frostbolt here. Oh no, he used the frost right on the shade. Oh, so right, that's true, yeah. actually squeeze it in. All right, so the most he can do is 22 then, because he can use in a, a hero power as well. That's still so much. You know, that's three. He's three off lethal effectively when he has 10 mana. He might draw Pyroblast. You know, he might develop secrets. Uh, Pyroblast a phase, try to go for combo. Just do it manually. Don't for Alex Straza as a, another Pyroblast. I mean, picking up Alex Strauss is great, but it's not necessary now as long as he, like you said, he picks up the damage he needs. I mean, Strife Crow here, uh, he, 
he really needs to get that combo. He really needs to be able to f to f either finish Taish quickly or finish him before he starts playing some secrets. And that's a frost mm. nova. Oh, that's a really good draw, I think. Because now this gives him the opportunity to develop both of his secrets here. His opponent's holding so many cards that like double combo could realistically be a possibility too. So if he frost novas with uh, the two secrets, um. not bad. Uh, although it doesn't develop any card draw, he could be thinking about ditching Thanos and then playing Ice Block and Frost Nova and pinging. That also could be a strong possibility. So that way he has a card draw out there pretty heavily. I also wouldn't blame him for this if he wanted to do that. I do like the development of the secret sister though, because turn nine you haven't got you haven't got Alex now, so it's just it's just such a nice curve out here. You get both ice block and barrier, so now you're protected from combo. So it's not as much of a threat as it was last turn, and you stopped more damage. So you just wait. It's just stalling out much more here. I, I, I he does need a card draw. He does need a cycle, but I I think it fits the curve so well there it was almost too tempting not to do the board being front means that combo was not going to kill him he's got 29 health effectively uh so Sharfko can't do that you can you develop another azure drake i think he just does he wants to avoid at all costs his opponent having like a really nasty flame strike and then uh he has to build back up the board from nothing yeah, everything here is vulnerable to flame strike. Even Sylvanas you can just ping it as well. It's, it's, yeah, it's not looking great for Strife Crow. I think the Drake is it's fine because you just want that card draw. I mean, fishing for the other Savage draw here would be great for him because he just has so much damage. That innovate. He's keeping the innervates. Would you innovate a Shredder here? Because even if he does Flame Strike, it comes back and it gives you something at least. It doesn't just give you a completely empty board and you're not starting from scratch. You, you'll you get at least one creature to start up your your offense again. Well, I do like the fact that Strafko insists on hero power stacking his armor, but how much do you want to use 14 mana in one turn? What does that What does that even allow you to do that you can't normally do? I know you can double combo for 12, but you can't even squeeze in a big game hunter. Um, oh, Ty's is actually just going for it here. Well, I mean, he, he just needs to draw into damage here. Like, he's, uh, he's all in, effectively. He's falling too far behind. His only, his only hope is to draw cards. Takes him down to six health. He just needs a fireball to finish this ga game off because the hero power won't make any difference here with the ping. Oh, oh. he gets the Ancient of Lore. Hold on. Does Ancient of Lore and Savage Roar allow him to do anything? Savage Roar, when there's uh, 10, 15, 20, 23. No, actually, he can't pop it. That's really annoying. I guess he needs to decide here. I mean, the problem is Taish has effective free draws coming up unless he silences something because the Falnos and the Loot Hoarder. I think I would much rather heal here. I, I want to see this pilot that Shredder develop. Just like I said, like he's, he's not fearing removal anymore. Even if he does top deck a Flame Strike, at least uh, the pilot that Shredder would bring something back and threaten him. Yeah, Shredder can go for the safer option here. His opponent's always going on two draws. Um, and you want to prioritize hero powering. He could pop the ice block just by going for a normal combo, but he leaves himself open to the died fireball top deck. And there's three draws to do it. It's just very likely that there's something bad that's going to happen. Tice needs a lot of help. Uh -oh. oh, he wants to take out the final. Yeah, that's, that's important. It just puts him a little bit further out of lethal range. I mean, Frostball, Frost Nova help. He picks up Antonitis. This could be the card he was looking for. Acolyte's awkward. Oh, he gets Pyroblast, but 
Now it's like uh actually he doesn't have the pyroblast this turn. He can acolyte ping frost nova. Guarantee himself two draws. What to do? What to yeah, he managed to top himself up to twelve health. So just out of pyroblast range, so it was good uh good from Strife Crow there. I think he should still go for card draw, because he's still behind that ice block, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, do you just Pyroblast and hope again? It's just, it depends what how risky he wants to play. I mean, I think both are kind of a risk in their own right. I think Acolyte's less of a risk, because he can't actually kill you with five minions on board, um, and you Frost Nova. Oh, yeah. He already Frost used the silence, and he doesn't have room to use the combo. Oh! oh. He was one... If he switched that Acolyte for Antonidas, he would have had that. I think he would have had the, the guaranteed win. Again, everything just seems so awkward for Strife Crow. He's definitely going to hero power, because he, again, he still just wants to put himself out of that range. We have eight mana and two innovates. Those innovates have sat in his hand for a very long time. Yeah, he got punished pretty heavily for keeping them for so long. Wait, is that two forces of nature? So he spawns two uh, triads. Yeah, I mean, he's just trying to deny draw. Gonna hero power. He has lethal anyways with the scenarios and... Or not lethal, but pop potential with Savage Roar and the scenarios. Oh, and there's that flame strike we were talking about. Uh yeah, but he doesn't he doesn't need that. He just has to pyroblast this turn and then he has Antonius Ice Block the following turn. And then uh he's got seven damage. So suppose at thirteen the most he can gain is two, so it's fifteen. Uh Ty should have overkill on Strife Crow by two damage. And now the only thing that you're worried about is a Kazan Mystic. If you flame strike and clear the board now, sure. Um, if you if you then your opponent develops the board, then you pyroblast, get your ice pop pop. It feels like the same thing. If you pyroblast now versus pyroblast the following turn, you're still hoping that your opponent can't uh, pop your block. But Ty should win this game here. And Freeze Mage defeating Druid is a really big deal because that was like the one matchup where he was worried about potentially not being able to kill his opponent. Well, this is what we were talking about earlier. We were worried for Taj uh, that this matchup may effectively decide the series for him, but he's managed to pull one out, uh, pull a game with uh, the set. And what's, I mean, what's good about that last play, I think, better than that Flame Strike, is he still has the potential of drawing a fireball. I'm pretty sure he's got one left, right? So we could even speed so, up. Right. Yeah, so we can even speed up his uh, his kill turn. And like you said, he, he guarantees the fireball from Antonidas anyway. So yeah, it's looking a, uh, it's looking really good for Taish. I can't see a uh, Strife Crow winning this. So what does Taish actually have left? Only is to, yeah, the only, the only alternative is to play a Pirate Shredder and hope, like Vitality Totem comes out of it. <laughs> Somehow, I optimistic. think he's really considered that possibility. So he plays the Pirate Shredder. And uh, Fireball is just going to end the game anyways. And Tice gets rewarded. He had the opportunity to set it up anyways. And it would have forced Redford to be in a lucky spot. Well done, though. And Tice takes a 2-1 lead. Yeah, it's really good of Tice to take the initiative. with When he had all that damage in his hand, he, he, he knew that he couldn't sit around waiting for Alex. So he just threw all that damage in his face. And from then on, his game plan was just to finish him off as quick as possible. And I think Tice played that exceptionally well. And it's like you're saying, uh, Striker was really punished for not using those innovates. He just sat in his hand all all game. They just did nothing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, they could have done a lot in terms of development, but Strife Crow held on to them uh, on the off chance that he was able to draw into more damage or a better ability to rebound onto the board. And as a result, it didn't happen. Strife Crow is now down 1-2, and uh, Tice is in a position to win the series from here. He's got uh, that Hunter remaining, and Hunter to defeat the Druid is a very big possibility, as well as maybe take out that Warlock as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it'd be surprised if it wasn't Face Hunter here, so the Face Hunter Warlock matchup would be really good for him. I, I mean, if it's hand-locked, the anti-kill bots can really swing 
uh, that matchup, it can be quite even depending on what if they're drawn and depending on how to, uh, how early the handlock can get taunts going on H and Watcher. But I mean, I'm expecting the zoo from Strife Crow. So Taish, if he plays if he plays well and gets the right draw, should be able to close out this series pretty easily. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, feeling pretty good for Tyson's spot in general. I know he's been he's been looking for better tournament results lately. He hasn't had like outside of a top four at Via game, he's always been a little hard on himself in terms of performance. But generally speaking, I think he's a really positive thinking guy. And uh, ultimately, regardless of what happens this series, it still doesn't eliminate either player. So. Don't worry, Strife Crow fans, if you're tuning in and you're like, ah, oh, I don't want him to lose and be out of the tournament, he's still he's still okay, regardless if he drops this game or the series. Uh, but in a couple of weeks' time, when the finals comes, it's it's down to business. And Taj has been doing pretty well so far. He only He's only lost to RG, from what I can see from these results. He beat both Dog and Faramir. So if he beats uh, Strife Crow here as well, I think there's another result that I haven't got. He may have uh, played already. Um, he's going to be looking good on the tables. Strife Crow beat RDU, but he's lost to both Reynad and Tide so far. Um, again, uh, there might be other results I don't have yet because this is uh, week five, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's week five. So I've only got about three weeks worth of results. So Tide is looking pretty good on the score sheet, the overall score sheet right now. Uh, Strife go if he gets he could probably do with this win to start knocking himself back up the table but um, as we said Tiger's looking really comfortable and getting another win is going to boost his confidence hmm well I think we're about to get started in just a, a couple of seconds here as we have Druid versus the Hunter and Tice opening hand a little awkward Beast of Sergeant has a one drop but it's Basically the same as a Murloc Raider. Uh, if you drop it on one, which isn't the most exciting one drop to be playing. Snake Trap and Eagle Horn Bow, not the best either, considering that you'd want to just take the opportunity to get board damage. So I'd assume that he'd he'd be willing to toss everything away, although keeping Abuse of Sergeant is reasonable because you go on turn one. Yeah, it's like guaranteed turn one. It's not the best turn one. I mean, you always want a Lepinome instead, but um, it's nice. It's always nice to be on curve as fast route because ultimately your goal is to, hit, is to beat them as fast as possible. And if you miss your one drop, you're missing two damage nearly all the time unless they respond to that two, uh, one drop with like a Wrath or something. So I think I think Taiz will hold on to the Sergeant just to get that uh, guaranteed uh, turn one pressure. All right, well, Abuse Sergeant is tossed. No, he gets Leroy and Kill Command. Druid gets Wild Growth into Keeper of the Grove, but is always the top of the deck. Just draw perfectly from this point on, and Tice is, Tice is good to go. Yep, so he gets that Lepinome we talked about. He also got the Abusive Sergeant back, even though he threw it away. So even if he didn't pull the Lepinome, he still had an option at least. Um, he probably won another another one drop here, maybe. Uh, maybe a Wargun. So he can follow up the abusive and just kind of optimize his curve. But hero power is still, a, well, it's an excellent hero power. And especially in this type of deck, it's the, it's it's just excellent. I mean, you want to utilize it as much as possible because it almost acts as an extra card for you. Because when you're pressing that hero power, you're always doing damage, which is ultimately what all your cards do anyway. And you just get more options in your hand for later on. Agreed, but this is... Oh man, Snake Trap's pretty awkward. Just gonna have to hero power. Um, you know, the fact that Strife Crow needed to do this so that way he can wild growth and then drop keep of the grove into a nice curve from that point on. Tice missing his turn two play here. Hero power still is something to do, but the fact is you're giving Druid time to play wild growth now. Yeah, you want a scientist, most certainly, or a knife juggler. Um, Snake Trap, like you said, is an awkward pickup. It's strange, actually, because some people are really for Snake Trap, but some people are really against against it, because Snake Trap's... Uh, it doesn't really complement the play style that much, because Explosive Trap does immediate damage, where Snake Trap is banking on your opponent, um, playing into it. But some play, people play, like, one of each. I've been playing one of each, and I, I quite like it. And Wargun, uh, Wargun Hero Power is not too bad either. Because he still gets that immediate two damage. He still gets his developer minion. 
I mean, a lot of the a lot of the hunters' minions range from two to kind of four attack anyway. So, I think Taiju's looking decent. The snake traps are just a bit awkward. This is awkward too. The keep of the grove has nothing to come down on. No silence, or I guess you could do two damage to your opponent's face. You want to keep that innervate for Doctor Boom. That is so good at play with five mana innervate into Dr. Boom and start pressuring. You can even race from that point on. The one damage Boom bots can trade it to anything and does damage to the face. Yeah, I think it's going to be super important for that turn five Dr. Boom. Like you said, you need it gives him the opportunity to race and then Strife Crystal has the option of drawing stuff like Savage Roar and Druid of the Claws just to even speed up the racing process. And when you've got a 7-7 seven, seven on board and a hunter can't deal with it or he has to start trading, that's even that's that's fine as well because a hunter's trading away damage to deal with this giant 7-7 seven, seven you've dropped two turns early. Oh, we actually decided to go with the Innovate and drop the Sludge Belcher for a bit of safety. It is, the Keeper is too valuable to, to use it on something like that. You need to use it to shut down a minion, silence the mad scientist. Like, there's so much utility from it. Dr. Boom... Like, it's just playing too optimistically to use Dr. Boom next turn uh, and then give up developing anything else better. Uh, the owl draw is so key actually here for Tice. That way he can maximize damage on his cards. I wonder if he's thinking about developing Snake Trap here at all. Okay. Just wants to put out as much damage as possible. I think with Snake Trap in this matchup as well, Swipe deals with it so easily, and it's a bit of an awkward card for the Hunter to have in this matchup specifically, whereas in other matchups against Mech Mage, for example, I think Snake Trap's really good because outside of Goblin Blast Mage, uh, it's very hard for Mech Mage to deal with 1-1 one -one tokens, so I invest in two mana into that ping, which they generally don't want to do, especially early on. So I think maybe a Hero Power is fine here and just uh, swing. Or maybe just try and make him think it's an explosive trap. I mean, it's always the gamble, right? If you, if you wait for a long time and you play the secret, it just adds more ambiguity to what it actually is. Oh, right. snake trap. <laughs> he wasted no time testing it, just threw straight out there, and now he has a general idea of what it is. So do you think Strifeco will race him from here on? He's just wasted his swipe, and I guess you'd want to keep your swipe if you knew it was a snake trap. Over right. developed say, a Drake. Yeah, but I mean, this is where like Leroy becomes hard. To deal with normally if you don't have a wrath but in this case keeper of the grove can can definitely deal with it then you have dr boom and you just keep attacking to the face he just gave you two more damage to return i mean savage roar could realistically be game ender if uh if he doesn't have it tice has such damage though he's got uh four six eight thirteen damage just in his hand assuming he can get everything else optimized yeah, he's gonna be, need the oh hounds! Wow, that's a good that's a good draw. Because now we can utilize uh, the synergy with kill command, making it five damage. Because one thing face hunter probably has a bit of trouble with these days, more so than before, is the lack of beasts. They got like two haunted creepers, two animal comps, and leash the hounds. That's that's just about it. But here, uh, I think I would take the opportunity to use the five damage on face here rather than waiting and trying to bank on drawing a haunted creeper later. He goes for the abusive. I mean, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm okay with this. He probably didn't use a swipe. He's uh, calculating for Savage Roar death too. Six, eight, fourteen. Yeah, he should be able to hero power and go face these two. And he still has enough damage to kill his opponent next turn. Not to mention that his opponent still might trigger Snake Trap in the in, in the attempt to um, try and defend. He's still thinking about these two dogs. Well, one's attacked to the face. The only question is if you need that. If Arcane Golem hits uh, with Kill Command, that's nine damage. Uh, so attack on this face might not matter if your opponent's going to hero power anyways and he clears the board. But it's still important just in the event where it is. Oh, the Savage Royal. So he did actually draw to the top. So Taiju made the correct decision there, playing around Savage Roar. 
I mean, he's got the option of uh, Ancient of Law here for fi for the heal. Uh, but the problem is he can't really clear the minions effectively because he pops the Snake Trap. So the Snake Trap actually becomes really good in this situation because it gives him the activator for the kill command, which will ultimately give him lethal to win the game. So I guess you have to Ancient of Law heal. Yeah, hmm. if you Ancient of Law heal, attacking because of Snake Trap, there's five damage on board and you leave four remaining. <laughs> And it's not worth it. So you go three, four, six to face. Six to face. Uh, eh, it's not enough. Your opponent's just going to swing back. Um, the five health you gain is just negated, and then kill command and arcane golem's enough. So I'm pretty sure no matter how Strifeco cuts this cookie, looks like he's dead. Yeah, it's a, well, it comes down to that snake trap, really, because it gives him... It makes it makes a uh, his oh. opportunity. Actually, if he trades down with the abusive sergeant and then trades everything else down, he survives by one HP unless his opponent draws one damage. I heard about that. His opponent will have four damage on board. Kill commands nine, and then arcane golem's thirteen. So he only has seven mana. He can't hero power. Oh yeah, so it comes down to an abusive sergeant, which he doesn't draw. And, well, Strifeco has the option of Savage Raw next turn. So now Taish has to consider, well, it has to clear a bit as well, but leave, hopefully leave Strifeco at enough where he can finish him off next turn. That's really interesting, because now Tice has to work a second Savage Roar uh, opportunity here. Um, his op he played around Savage Roar once, Will he play around again? 5, 8, uh, 14, 15. So if he just kills off one of these minions, he still should be able to... Um, he still should be able to play around one Savage Roar. Now, the problem is you can't play Arcane Golem and hit the face because then you play into the combo potential. Like, what if he just has the full Force of Nature Savage Roar and then you die? That's tough, man. Almost... Very difficult spot here. Tice may have to part ways with a kill command here or his arcane golem. Yeah, he's got to take a risk somewhere. And I guess he's he, if he's going to lose the combo, he's going to lose the combo. That's just that's just gonna, the way it's going to be. So he's going to trade into the... Okay, so he trades into the 2-1. And he still gets... He still gets to leave the snake alive. If it doesn't really... Oh, yeah. Well, leaving the snake alive is fine because he still has the the owl to activate his kill command. So now Ty's prize was probably, um, Strifeco was probably hoping to draw a Druid of Claw there. But right. it wasn't meant now, to be. Now, is in a similar position. He's still like two points off from killing his opponent, but he can deny his opponent from killing him by hero powering and playing Dr. Boom. Or even Emperor Thorison if he wants to reduce the amount of minions on board while still representing lethal. Drake might even be slightly better than Thorson because you get to draw a card, which I don't know what you could realistically draw, though, for four mana or less that you'd want to have a higher impact than just hero powering. Hero power is super important for kill command, though, because your opponent will have seven damage next turn. Yeah. A low five would be nice. <laughs> it's a shame. Uh, I think... I think Forasan is probably the best option, like you said, because it reduces his chances of beating you, and you still have lethal available to you without overcommitting too much to the board. Yeah, sacrificing the Sludge Belcher and playing is also okay. You still have only four bodies. So at this point, it's like if he has Unleashed to Hounds and Kill Command, you die. But whatever. So Tice just needs one point of damage for three mana or less. And that should do it. Yeah, Wolf yeah. Rider's exact. Wow, Tice ends the series right here. Just barely being able to eke out Strife Girl. That was really tightly contested back and forth. Yeah, the end of that game is really interesting because they both had to consider what each other had to be able to finish each other off. So uh, it came to a very kind of like optimal trade-in to trying to play around each other's uh, win conditions. So yeah, it was really, really good end to that match.
Yeah, for sure. So fun stuff all around. Uh, but Tice takes the better of this series here. I'm looking at that freeze mage versus druid game. In fact, druid seemed to be the the weak point here throughout the entire series of Strife Grow, just not being able to to put it in against freeze mage or hunter. Um, and I, I I'm I think also dropping the rogue game is understandable, but still you're expecting druid to perform better than that. Another argument against druid for necessarily bringing it in conquest. People say druid is decent against a lot of stuff, not amazing, and in this case, strife. If it was Druid was subpar in uh, all these matchups, unfortunately. Yeah, he would have wanted to win that freeze uh, freeze mage matchup. I mean, that might have been a reason why he brought it because of the popularity of freeze mage going around and um, where it's a bit better than Warrior right now. Warrior seems to have been a kind of a, a clunky spot. But yeah, um, very good game to tie. So he played exceptionally well. I I really enjoyed all the matches from them, from them both. Awesome. Great stuff. Uh, and that wraps up our third series of the day. We still have uh, another one coming up. We have 6-0 RDU, and uh, we're going to have an interesting dynamic there because I know both of them are salt boys. Both of them are really competitive, and they want to get those Gosu Gamer ranking points. want to give a shout-out to uh, the NVIDIA guys. Make sure to check out their website, esports.geforce.com, as well as um, anything else regarding the competition. There's a big open portion of it. Uh, a few of us were even thinking about entering it, but just, you know, eight weeks is a hard commitment, especially if we're traveling this month. But not necessarily for people who just want to enjoy some casual Hearthstone fun. So check out the link, esports.geforce.com, and you can thank NVIDIA GeForce on Twitter. Meanwhile, guys, we're going to take a break. Uh, get ready for our last series of the day. Once again, it's 6 from Team Archon, RDU from Team Nihilum, uh, and Tice has just taken the Series 3-1. Well done to him, and we'll see him again uh, in the upcoming weeks. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back after a few minutes with more Hearthstone Pro-Am Tournament brought to you by NVIDIA GeForce. <laughs> 